Hi everyone, welcome back to the studio. It's been a while, I know, I'm so I'm really happy to be painting for you today. I bet some of you thought we disappeared, but no, we just took a little break. Not, no, nothing catastrophic. We just taking a break, letting me have the opportunity to, to dig deep into some new projects. So that's really pretty exciting. And one big project that we have culminating pretty soon is my new Procreate workshop. It's a live Zoom workshop. That's something we haven't really done. So we're really excited. It is now absolutely full. Um, and we have a wait list because if we have enough demand, we will in fact be doing a second, maybe even third session if it's um, if we have enough demand. So that's coming right up. Um, and very, very excited about it, um, bringing that to everyone. That, that's a four-day Zoom workshop, so that'll be really intense. And let's see what else. Oh, this morning here in Portland, we had some snowflakes. That's kind of gone by the wayside. And we also had a little visitor to the studio this morning. Um, Roger, my good friend uh, and photographer, brought his new little guy in, Scoops, the, what is it? It's a a schnoodle? Sh no, no, it's what I it's a, a it's a mix, Aussie doodle. Aussie doodle, a mix between a poodle and an Aussie. Now there's some cute stuff going on there. And what else have I got going on? Oh, I'm just going to share a couple of paragraphs from this book. Now this book has been recommended to me by students in the past, and I kind of um, I don't know why it just it just escaped me. But I've, it's The Creative Act, A Way of Being by Rick Rubin. And I, so I've got it, the hard copy. I also got an audiobook version so I can listen to it on my walks, which has been super great. So I'll share a, a couple of tidbits from that. And then I'm just going to get painting for you today. That's it. So let's see. Um, what did I have marked here? Art is choosing to do something skillfully, caring about the details, bringing all of yourself to make the finest work you can. It's beyond ego, vanity, self-glorification, and need for approval. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to do something skillfully today. It doesn't always work. You, you have to, you, you want to give that a try, but you also have to give yourself permission to fail and to do, fail often and get up to the easel as much as you possibly can no, without, uh, without worrying about the result. Yes, you want to put all, all your skills to bear, but you, you definitely have to give yourself permission to just get in there and try some new stuff. And then this next one is, if we can tune to the idea of making things and sharing them, without being attached to the outcome, the work is more likely to arrive in its truest form. So that kind of brings me full circle to what I was saying there. So that's cool. And one other thing I'll, I'll share before I get going is my sketchbook. I talked a bit about this, that I challenged myself to do a page a day or thereabouts this year. Well, that's not quite happening, but uh, there's some good stuff happening in here. Um, it's my cover that I'll finish out, but there's some there's some different stuff. This is a sketchbook that I'm allowing for any kind of anything goes in it. I have other sketchbooks that are more dedicated to um, say thumbnails or dedicated to figure drawing, but this one is kind of an anything goes whatever moves me on any given day kind of thing. Here I'm studying some anatomy stuff for the Procreate workshop and digging kind of deep into that, making some contour drawings and concentrating on line and creating depth with different line weights. Oh, skipped a page. Some little bird studies. I love putting these stamps on the pages and kind of making it a, a complete journal page. So that's really fun. So I'm behind for sure, but 
definitely, it's still a good challenge. I'm still getting there more frequently than I would have if I hadn't given myself the challenge. So that's a good thing. And one last thing I wanted to mention before I get painting today is that I have recently posted some new pieces or some, they're not necessarily new pieces, but I've posted some work on my daily paintworks in my daily paintworks gallery. So um, affordable pieces um, and they're, I believe for the most part pastels. So um, there, let's go, go and uh, check those out. So this is an example. I think this one's up there. So there are pieces similar to this and um, all different um, subject matter actually, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the book is The Creative Act, A Way of Being by Rick Rubin. So it's kind of got a kind of unique cover to it. Yeah, it's really good. And it is, um, it is actually a pretty fast read, so it's nice. Does he read the um, audio book? Pardon? Does he read the audio book? Yes, he does read the audio book, and I, um, he does a good job of it, so. Yeah, I'm enjoying that as well. I'm I'm listening while I'm walking, obviously, and then I come back and pick up where I left off with the with the hard copy. All right. So today's piece, uh, this happens to be a Bishop's Close Garden, which um, recently was sold. It used to be open to the public, and I'm hoping that that will still be the case. Moving forward, we'll see what happens with, it's a beautiful, beautiful garden here in the Portland area, kind of over, overlooking the river. It's gorgeous. What I love about this reference is the layering of the light, the patterns of light and shadow. So that foreground, those flowers in the foreground, though there's all these, the little white ones and then the, the larger bush, which um, I'm not sure what, Looks like it's some kind of roadie. Um, they're white, but they are sitting mostly, most of those flowers are sitting in shadow. So that's something to, to be aware of. Then I've got this little hint of a pathway going back around to those two trees that are rather centered. So those trees are in the center and so Pulling that off is going to be kind of tricky, right? But I think it will work out um, just because I think there's enough going on and I can balance the composition enough that I think basically centering the trees will work out all right. Then the, so that little pathway, now those two tr main tree trunks, they're, they've got this interesting light on them, kind of dappled light hitting them uh, so they're, they're kind of half in shadow and half in light. And that, I think, is uh, one of the things that really attracts me to this reference photo. That and the fact that behind those trees, they're silhouetted by that bright, um, more chartreuse green tree and some little bit of blue sky, hints of blue sky. So there's quite a lot going on in this. Uh, my plan for today so I'm, I'm, I'm on the dark green pastel mat, uh, and I have in mind to do an initial layer of pastel, really light, and then come in with a little bit of an alcohol wash. That's something that I've been employing pretty, um, pretty frequently in my work lately, uh, so I'm kind of I'm loving that. So that's a little bit of a plan. We'll see how it works out. I'm, I'm a little nervous today because I haven't painted in front of you guys in a while. And um, that's okay, though. We'll see what happens. Do you want to take a couple so, of questions while you're working? Yeah, with? sure. Yeah. So can you remind everyone what the sketchbook that you use? Yeah, it's a... It's a you use a lot of different kinds. Yeah, I use a lot of different ones. This one's um, B Paper, Aqua B. Um, this is a company in Beaverton. This is the the this is gray recycled rough sketch. Now that that's very specifically this one. Um, I'm not super great fan of this paper, honestly. I wish I hadn't gotten the rough sketch, but 
that's no for next time. Next time I'll probably get and then my I'm hoping to do more than one sketchbook this year. Um, I, I was hoping for a big stack, but we'll see. Um, I think I'll get a little smaller one because I do think one of the barriers for me when I when I see that sitting on my desk, I think, oh, I've got to fill out that whole big page. So maybe a little bit, little bit smaller page might be a little bit more um, attractive to me. All right, so I've got my reference photo printed out, um, holding it in my hand, and I've got the version of it here up on my iPad. Now, a lot of people do ask me, well, why, you know, why do you, why do you hold it in your hand? Um, and I think that it's, it's, it's a comfort thing for me. It's a habit, that, a holdover habit from way back in the day when I first started painting the landscape or painting at all, that I, this is what I did. I would stand in front of the easel and I'd have the, my reference photo in my hand. So that just makes me feel good. So that's what I'm doing. So I continue to do it, not, not because you need to. Um, yeah, it's kind of like I remember when I was a little girl, my mom, when we, we did a lot of sewing, we always did tons of crafts, always had something in our hands when we were sitting in front of the TV. But sewing in particular, my mom would take the, the needle and thread and she'd loop that thread and she'd tie a knot on it so that the, the, it was a loop. And she did that so that I, my sister and I wouldn't lose that needle, that it wouldn't slip off the, the thread. And so for years and years and years, I always did it that same way. And then finally, I found out that that was the reason she did that. <laughs> and that's the same thing with this. I'm, I'm doing it just out of a, out of a perverse habit, not, not because I need to. All right, so I'm just going to get in here with a little loose value. And I want my trees, my main trees in here. So again, I'm going to... Start with a loose little knot. And these live streams, uh, people often mention, oh, you paint so fast, can you slow down? N no, I can't really slow down. Not if I'm going to paint just the way I would paint for you. Oh, this is coming across here really nice. And it's important when it comes to trees to be thinking about what they're doing. They're radiating, they're, those limbs and branches and little tendrils are radiating in all directions. So we want to try to describe that as much as we can with the line weight and the way we are... Um, There we go, that's nice. So we already sort of get a, a little bit of sense of what's happening. And this is in light. Here's my little kind of pathway. This is in, this is shadow. This is all shadow. And then I've got this, the, my roadie that's kind of coming. And I don't know how much of oh, this is going to do something. Can you describe what is line weight? Is it thick? Is it thin? Right? So this is, you know, you can make different kinds of line weight with um, it, the same stick. My line painting, line uh, was a big deal. Very big deal. My painting instructor um, used to say the key to a good painting is a variation of line, width, and weight. Yep. Plus a hierarchy of size in the negative space. 
Oh, well, yeah. That's, that's like the, and then just follow those rules and you're good to go. <laughs> well, that's the same as saying that you, you an, an un, unequal division of all of the elements. So you don't want everything to have the same intensity, the same value, the same size, the same line weight, all of that. Okay. Um, I'm liking that. That Do I like that? So I'm giving the trees more than the this foreground. It's a little opposite of the reference photo. If I wanted to, I could come down here and get that wiggle room that I have left myself by making my bounding box. But I don't know. I'm going to decide when I get to it. Okay, so now I'm going to stain in some color. So I've got a little bit of a rough sketch here, some interesting line, a little bit of value to, to guide me. So now I'm going to get a little bit of color going. Um, and it occurs to me that the easiest thing to start with is the thing that's just kind of popping out to me, and that's this light green back here. And I can... Just get a little of it going here. This is actually grass back here. And then moving forward, just kind of stain a little color in. And this down here, I am like that little bit of light that's poking through right there, too. Sure, I want that. Let's see. No, I can't remember. Um, did we release a video about alternatives to blue spruce? I don't know if we. I. We've talked about it. We, I don't know where we left that. But today you're using blue spruce, correct? I am. Yeah. <clears throat> But I could just as well have used charcoal. I'm finding that charcoal kind of is a good um, place to go for that too. I'm just trying to find some little bit of interesting color for this ground plane. kind of works. And Elaine reminds us that yes, we did a comparison video um, and it, it may have been on the, with a membership like a mini lesson. Yeah. So we do so much that we forget what we do. Oh God, we do. <laughs> and we're, we're kind of in the, in the throes right now of year five um, pretty pretty deeply at the moment so we're really cranking it's good though year year five is pretty um, epic 
All right, I'm just getting a few things in because then I'm planning that alcohol wash. So right now I don't have too much writing on what's here. Can, do you prefer vine or willow charcoal? Um, when I'm using charcoal for the drawing phase here, I'm usually using a charcoal pencil. <laughs> Not looking like much yet. Yes, um, you said charcoal pencil. Charcoal pencil, yeah. But there's all, all kinds of things that can work. Okay, that's, oh yeah, okay, okay. It's like, start to see the light. Working back here. Really getting that light going. It's coming across here. That's really cool. Right, and um, and Back there, um, see. So right now I'm just generalizing everything. It's a little bit of a Terry Ludwig eggplant. This is the pine branches that are um, in front of this, the, the, the light back here. Right now it's looking a little patchy, but that's okay because I know that I'm going to put that alcohol wash and that's going to really unify everything to harmonize everything together for me.
um, you know, I'm just thinking about composition. Is it, do, it does it work with those trees in the center? I think it's okay. I think it'll, it'll be able to pull that off. All right, so now, we're doing on time, okay. Put a branch over the top. All right. Get a bristle brush here. Actually, this is a synthetic brush, um, and not not super super deeper expensive brush. And a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. This is the seventy percent. And this is going to darken this pretty significantly, but not, um, it'll dry lighter than it looks right now. But it really pulls it all together, unifies everything. I've been just doing this a ton lately. More than I used to. And it really sets the pastel, that initial layer right into the paper surface, allowing me to get more pigment on top of it. I might have you go dry this, Kevin, so we can get back at it. Because right now, probably doesn't look too much like anything, but I see, I see that where it can go, so it's good. So all, you, all you need is like a little hint to, to spur you on, right? To be able to say, okay, I have a little avenue forward. And hair dryer. Um, it's right there. there. All right, so we'll be back in just a second. So what else is going on? Yeah, so the Procreate workshop is going to be a really fun thing. I can't wait to see everyone's actual faces during the workshop. That's something a little bit different. And so that's, that's coming right up. And uh, we're just working away on all kinds of stuff. Year five is um, we're, we're actually wrapping it up a little early this year. Um, typically, we go a couple months further out, but we're a little ahead of schedule this time, which is really, really exciting. So we can um, add on some other fun stuff to the, to the whole thing. And I think that everyone will be really excited about what's coming in year five. I hope I am. So Kevin won't be that much longer. And uh, yeah, so gardens really popping as well, really um, waiting for waiting for spring to really get here though it hasn't quite every day is a different different thing we get uh, kind of bounce be, between the those uh, really nice almost 70 degree days and the <laughs> almost freezing days so I guess it's that time of year all right here it comes didn't have to make too much small talk. <laughs> Great. Ooh, cool. All right, tell me where I need to put it. Is that, is that good? All right. 
Okay. All right, so now it's, it's all kind of mushy, harmonious. I like that. That works for me. Okay. Get in here now. Now I can really start to carve some things out. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love it. Really nice. And then this. <clears throat> so I'm going back and forth between the positive and the negative. So now this is the pine that's in front, the branches that are in front. So I want to be always doing that, going back and forth between that positive and negative shapes and knitting things in and around each other. So Marla, um, how do you prevent buckling on your paper when you use the paper, like that pastel mat? Um, paper? Well, I try to to minimize the the amount of kind of liquid that I'm adding. So I'm a little careful about the quantity of the alcohol. Um, this is a, a smaller piece. When you start getting into larger pieces, it can be a little bit more of a problem. Um, and you do not add water to the alcohol? No, I don't add any water to the alcohol. I'm using that 70%. Um, this is doing some kind of... Uh, Can you talk a little bit about um, the composition size, like standard sizes? Are you, are you, did you make that specifically so it could fit a frame, or did you, did, did you not? Make I, um, you know, I, I, I try to be a little cognizant of that, but um, because I'm doing these as demonstrations, that's it. My, my focus is not, oh, I'm going to sell this or. Um, frame it. I'm, I'm not really focused very much on that. And I typically am not. Not that I wouldn't like to sell paintings. I, 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 I do. Never hurts to work in a standard size. No, though. it doesn't. So you could right right in here you could see this layering is starting to happen. So the, this this dark darker shape back here is silhouetting this little bush that's got a little light popping on it. It's got some little um, uh, leaves that are popping up and revealing themselves uh, against that silhouette. That's really nice whenever that happens.
Now these are the white flowers. And I'm going to get a little bit different kinds of color on some of them. A little, little bit different scale on some of them. And then I go down here. And there are a few of these smaller flowers that are actually in light in between these branches down here, which is kind of cool. So I'm just kind of building up these layers as I go. And I'm thinking about Just starting to get a clear path into that. Can you uh, explain what you mean by float it in a frame? Pardon? Um, you said float it in a frame at one point. Float it in a frame. I don't. Um, so there are many different ways of 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 uh, framing styles. So floated floated in a frame would mean um, doesn't have a map. That it's just um, has a backing but not a mat. Just kind of getting a sense of the quality of, of light here. Yeah, I think that's starting starting to get what I want. Donna says that there's a blizzard in Santa Fe right now. Oh, really? It's pretty wild. Wow. Stay safe out there. Yeah. Must be really be beautiful, though. It's such a nice area. Get some good reference photos. Yeah, definitely. Although, I don't know, in a blizzard, blizzard might make it a little tough. The aftermath. Oh. <laughs> a painting a blizzard might be pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What am I doing on time? I'm doing pretty good on time. I'm all right.
Now you see how I'm using these negative shapes for the branches. Now see if I hadn't done all this, I wouldn't have I have all this really wonderful stuff to play with here. If I hadn't done that alcohol wash, I wouldn't have nearly the flexibility here. Over here I have all kinds of good stuff. That's neat. There's a couple little orange flowers in there. Kind of like them, so I'm going to try to get those in there too. And I'm right now I'm going to get up into the sky a little bit. Right after I get done playing around down there. <laughs> All right, how about that sky? This is the kind of stuff I, I just really like to take my time with. Um, so I'm probably hurrying a little bit um, for us today. But There's a little lighter blue in here. I think that would be nice to get. And you could see that for the most part, everything that I'm painting is pretty thin. There's not, there's not a lot of thick application of pastel going on. And look at how that just starts coming to life. has that nice kind of mysterious feel to it. Now, I wasn't really sure about how to handle the foreground. Um, and w when I get kind of stuck on something like that, the, the, you know, I think the best thing to do is to keep keep going, keep moving around, and then a, most of the time when you're feeling stuck about one little section unless you don't have if you don't have the information say if you're you know you're you're making something up but I'm not talking about that I'm talking you just don't quite know how to handle one area of a, of a piece um, just I just keep moving around and then usually 
as I'm developing other sections of the piece, um, it kind of reveals what to what to what to do in that problem zone, trouble zone. And I think that's kind of how I feel right now. Like, okay, I think I can figure out what I need to do here. Kind of a little middle ground there I'd like to say something about. And do I want to get into the um, the orange flowers yet. Here's another question. Um, if you don't have white pastel matte paper, can you put white gesso over a colored paper? I, I, I wouldn't do that. Um, it, it, you can, you can do that with, with, if you're working with a board or canvas, but I think it'd be pretty tough with paper. Um, you're going to really get some heavy buckling. Okay, I think it's looking good. Getting these little clusters. The thing I don't want to do with these flowers, it'd be really easy to just make a really even pattern. I want to make sure that they're, it's like a little cluster rather than a um, than a regular pattern. I want to want those leaves to be kind of soft. Come back to that section. I want to. I want to play with the trees a little bit more. Get this going a little bit. Right, I'm um, 
Like in that. Want over here would be nice if that had a little softer green to it and a little bit lighter. I'm looking for what I've got that will help me do that. Let's see, maybe it's something I've already got going. some the thing about um, photo references uh, you you don't need to say everything that's in a photo reference <coughs> and you probably don't want to So I'm using that photo as a jumping off point for my painting rather than the other way around. This really came together. Yeah, it's nice. It's, um, yeah. I wasn't sure. Sometimes I kind of, I try to pick something. I tried to pick this some. For the for today's demo, I tried to pick something that I knew, was pretty confident about, but sometimes one never knows. Can hit, can hit a bumpy patch. I don't want to get too much detail in, in that section. That's What time is it? Okay. All right. Another question. Yeah. yeah. Um, how did you choose the uh, dark green paper? Is your paper choice, paper color choice, driven by the predominant color in the Im image? Um, it's a really, really good question. In this case, yes, that's how I selected the paper. There are other times that I'm, I'm going to do just the opposite, that I'm going to pick a, a color that's complementary to the, the situation. It really depends on what I, what I want to always be doing is try have at least 
to start with when I'm painting. I, I want to have some kind of concept or idea of how the final piece um, might, um, what it might be like. Is it going to be super atmospheric? Is it going to be um, more um, linear base, driven base, or is it more about the values and the light patterns of light and shadow? So it really depends on those things. And um, I'm going to choose materials um, and, and the approach that I use um, based on how I think I'm best going to be able to arrive at, uh, at, at um, realizing that vision, that idea that I have now. That doesn't mean that it always is a straight path like that. Sometimes you get in and you realize, oh, the painting's telling you something different, takes, takes you in a different place, which is fun and is perfectly legitimate. Um, there are other times that, that it's... Um, no, it, so it, it's not always the same. I, I, you know, I don't have a formula. I have ideas and tools and some ideas of sort of order of operations and procedures, but I don't, I try to, to keep that very flexible. And I like to have different ways of approaching so that a different subject matter might um, permit me to, to go in some different directions. Okay, so there's a ton of different stuff that could be done in here. Um, I am wondering about those orange flowers. I think that would be they'd be fun to put in. And since I have a couple more minutes, I'm going to go ahead and do that. It'd be fun also to have a little bit more um, uh, kind of line quality with the branches and, uh, and, and down in here, flowers. But for now, let's see. What about orange flowers? So I'm going to go for the orange. I'm going to need a dark and a light. Let's see. Now I might not like these. I might not like it at all. So we'll see. It might not work. I just want to see that color in there and see if I like it. Uh, mm. It's one of those that's like you kind of almost have to, you have to make more of a commitment. It might be one of those that I live with it a little bit and decide. I might have to live with it a little bit. All right, in the meantime, just playing with some of these little <coughs> negative shapes. Really get it to that's nice and Mm 
All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for me today. Let's take a look. Maybe we could get a sizing mat, Kevin, oh, yeah. and see what it looks like with a little frame on it. Just needs a few little tweaks here and there, and I think it'll be a nice little piece. Right. Yeah, I might like that orange. Maybe it maybe it needs maybe that orange <clears throat> should be pink instead of orange. We'll see. It's kind of good right there in the center because it's it's to me it's echoing the the whole centered idea of the piece. So I do think that from that perspective, um, they th these flowers are a good idea from the from a um, compositional perspective. And just then also adding, it's sort of um, a color that's it's an outlier. Um, and sometimes that can be work really well too because it's obviously it's an immediate. Um, focal point to the piece. So, you know, I think I'll probably try to make those work. All right, guys, that's it for today's stream. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And I uh, also hope you have a really wonderful weekend and you get a chance to do some painting yourself. All right, we'll see you soon. We will be back with some more free live streams um, here and there, not every single week, but we just um, keep an eye out and we'll be back. All right. Bye.